Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. I have a giant mess here. There's uh, two or three projects going on here all at once. And uh, right now I'm down to this small area that should be able to get what I'm doing finished up. Um, so I've been working on my forklift recently, and I'll probably throw some pictures in there of that. Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. I'm Jeff Allison, and thank you for watching. had a set of gauges in it, um, had this old uh, oil pressure gauge that wasn't working, uh, an amp meter that didn't appear to work, a fuel gauge that doesn't even have a needle, um, of course I had a key switch, had a Hobbs meter, which for those of you who don't or maybe aren't familiar, that's a uh, hour meter for the, the uh, engine to tell you how, how many hours the engine actually has on it and the reason they were called Hobbs is because they were built by uh, the John W. Hobbs company and so Hobbs kind of became the uh, universal name like much like Crescent Wrench or Vice Grips. Um, anyway uh, this is a 6 volt the, the tractor has been converted to 12 volts at some point in its life. In fact I just reworked the alternator the other day and put a self-igniting uh, regulator in it so it'll be a one wire alternator just to do some of the wiring and the thing um, and I just tried working this off six volts off of off of my power supply and uh, it it's locked up so unfortunately I you know short of sending it off and having somebody try and rebuild it or whatever it's probably not going to be able to reuse that which I was kind of hoping to because it's just it's cool the the engine had uh, I don't know how much of that you can see, but there's three needles here on the main gauge plus an additional needle over here. So each needle represents something else. The short needle on the very inside is a thousand hours, and then a hundred hours on the next needle, and then tens of hours on the last needle. And this one up here does, uh, I believe, minutes. Um, anyway, so this this engine, this forklift, would have had essentially power on it for. Uh, 3,658 hours and 15 minutes, at least the last time that was hooked up and functioning. Um, let's see if I can show you that a little better. Yeah, get it. So, anyway, I was kind of really hoping to reuse that. That was kind of their center gauge there, but uh, I guess. Uh, I will try and, and just find another round meter that I can put in there. Um, additionally, I'm going to be using these Bosch uh, gauges. Um, and I bought all electric. This had a water temperature. That's the other thing that was in here was a water temperature gauge um, that used the, the mechanical sensor. And I'm just going to put everything electric in it just to, just because I prefer that kind. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna put all the gauges in. I, I sanded this down yesterday, painted it up with a hammer finish, and then uh, it goes into a box that then mounts on the steering column. So that's it. That's kind of my little project for this morning. I'm gonna try and get all these gauges in here, get uh, ignition switch wired up. Um, gonna add a headlight switch because I'm gonna put a couple of work lights on it. And I'm going to add a horn button switch. Um, and so based on what I've got here, which is these three gauges, uh, probably do those across here. Or I, I don't know what orientation, but I basically am going to have an extra hole. And I think what I'm going to do is just make a block off plate for that hole. Um, not really sure. May put, may find some other kind of gauge to put there just to fill them all. But basically, I'm just filling holes at this point. So anyway, let's get started. And, uh, 
get this project moving ahead. Well, there it is for now um, so I could not I think I told you earlier I couldn't get the Hobbs meter working uh, something inside it seems to be shorted out so I've ordered a new Hobbs meter and actually I'm going to put it down here in this corner and then I ordered just a blank cover plate to cover that hole and uh, while I was doing that I had planned on just using this uh, fuse block inside the inside the uh, cover of the, or the case that this goes in and I decided instead I've got some that are coming that'll have uh, they're individual but I can put them right here probably across that cover and have the fuses kind of easily accessible but uh, bench tested everything off my power supply and uh, it's all pretty well wired I left a couple of leads here so that I could wire in the Hobbs meter that's it um, so I've got the headlights, and when these light, when that's pulled, the lights on the gauges come on. Anytime the power is on, um, because it, it's always had a problem with draining the battery. So um, even though I'm going to be rewiring it, probably will find the short that was in there. Uh, that just reminds me that the main power is on because there's a uh, a master on/off switch for the power. And I've added a horn switch, and like I said, the headlight switch, um, and those. Those will actually control just relays that then will uh, power those different items. So anyway, got it all wired up. Got long leads here. Uh, as soon as the hour meter and the cover plate come in, I'll get those thrown on there. And this will be done. Um, one more item for the for the forklift to finish it up. All right. So it's been about uh, a week or so since I was working on this panel. And I got a filler plate for that hole. I had to get a new Hobbs meter, so this one's not actually a Hobbs, but an hour meter. And I couldn't find anything with a white face except something that was digital, so we're just going with the basic black, and it's gonna go there. And then I found some of these cool little uh, fuse holders, the ATO fuse holders. And what my thinking is that I'm gonna try and uh, cut a hole in two places here and have the fuses basically be sticking out here and that'll give me a fuse for the uh, uh, circuits going on inside here so um, that's what I'm going to work on now I'm going to go ahead and take this face plate back off throw this meter in and wire it up and then uh, in the meantime cut two slots in here for the uh, two of these fuse holders um, also that came in is a little horn a little 12 volt horn just as a you know warning or whatever that you're moving around All right, guys, that's basically it for my, my little forklift dash. Um, got the hour meter in there. It's wired up. Headlight switch, light switch. Um, of course, the gauges. I added two fuses here. So this one is basically just fusing the uh, horn switch. And then that switch will control a relay. And then the other uh, fuse is for the lights and the gauges and the hobs. Well, it's actually the gauges, the lights and the gauges, the hobs meter and uh, the headlight switch. Um, the headlight switch and the horn switch will both control uh, 
just a weatherproof relay and I'll mount those down on the body somewhere and then uh, mount my little horn um, there's actually a stock horn in there and I'm going to test it and see if it works but if not I've got a little motorcycle horn just for uh, safety's sake if people are moving around or working around you and then uh, I've got some LED lights that I'm going to control with this and probably mostly going to have them off the back but may add a couple to the front as well but as long as I keep it all LED that 10 amp well and the, the 10 amp fuse basically is is the switch to the to the relay so the rest of the circuit will be fused off of uh, the main power coming off the the actual uh, battery and alternator so anyway that's finished up um, this switch doesn't isn't hooked to anything I cleaned it up and just put it back to fill the hole um, I don't have the brake interlock that this was supposed to control so if I ever find one I may get it hooked up again but uh, for now this is all done I'm gonna set this aside on a shelf and uh, try and get a few more things done on the forklift so I can get the the uh, transaxle back in it and try and get the uh, get that in and then go ahead and get the engine back in so that I can hook up the hydraulics and everything I found a crack in the lower frame that holds the uh, the forks up and down basically it holds the hydraulic lift for the forks so once I get the engine stuff mounted back in there I'm going to go ahead and disassemble the whole front side of the forklift and uh, my father-in-law is going to show me how to braise that up so um, he's got some tricks for brazing up cast iron so we'll get that done and finally get this thing back back into use so okay, thanks for watching please like and subscribe Make some comments. Let me know what you guys think, what you want to see. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Thanks for watching Allison Customs Project Car TV. Like us on Facebook and check us out at allisoncustomsonline.com.